Hello and welcome to the newest episode of the Arts Overlook. I'm your host, Colby Campbell, and on every episode I give you a look at the current arts and entertainment in the Cedar Valley. Today I'll tell you about two fascinating local artists who have found their calling creating photographs in the old-fashioned way with large format film, view cameras, chemistry, hard work, and a lot of patience. Don't go anywhere. The Arts Overlook starts right now. Art is thriving in the Cedar Valley. It's everywhere. But if you don't know where to look, you could miss it. This is your local arts perspective. This is the Arts Overlook. Shannon and Colleen Graham have been taking photographs since their teen years, and after years of study and practice, have turned that hobby into a lifestyle, creating incredible art by manipulating objects, chemistry, and light. I visited their studio and exhibition at the Hearst Center in Cedar Falls to learn more. Shannon and Colleen Graham know their stuff. They've practiced for years with analog photography and are now using their skills to create fine art. The culmination of their latest work is an exhibition called Studies in the Reactions of Silver and Light. You can't have photography without light. And you can't have analog photography without silver. Silver reacts to light. So that's kind of where the title came from. It's studies in the reactions of silver and light. And that's what we think about, at least I do, in the dark room on what's happening. There's a very physical reaction that happens, and very organic. So um, it's almost like a living thing. And, and that's a, kind of why I call it that. Yeah. We, didn't, we shoot such a wide variety of subjects that it, we don't necessarily like, it, it's pieces and parts of different projects, so we don't necessarily like to give the whole show one theme. Rather, we like to complete the total study of it, so um, it gives everyone something to look at and relate to, and then just kind of realize that there are so many ways that the light and silver can re react to create a nice image. The Graham's images have made it around the world and back, but this winter, you have the opportunity to see them in person at the Hearst Center in Cedar Falls, including one of their favorite images, composition number one a combination of five different photos of found objects and other creations overlaid by Colleen's poetry. Um, so the, the poems that I wrote for it came out of those experiences from my childhood. Um, the one, the first one is one set my mom's side of the family and the last one is my dad's side of the family and kind of the reminiscing of it. Um, and I typed those up on my typewriter so you get all of the mistakes and everything that's beautiful about a 1970s typewriter that all the keys stick after a while. And, um, and then we photograph that, that type sheet on the medium format camera. Shannon photographed the rusty tin on his large format. We put one negative in one enlarger and the other negative in the other enlarger, lined everything up, worked out our exposure. So basically, he would take the print paper in his enlarger, expose it, and then give it to me, and it would go into my enlarger, we'd expose it, and then we'd develop it. And see what we got, and then we'd have to adjust from there. Yeah. So there's five P there's actually five images in that one piece. Thing. So that's what we mean by we did it together. And of course we do everything together because we, we help each other and we hold lights for each other and we always Yeah bounce ideas off each other. So yeah, pretty much all of them we did together, but that's what we mean by that one we really did do. It was a totally collaborative piece. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and even in the making and um, even when we were developing the paper, is I'd put it in the developer and I'd do that part and I'd do the stop bath, well then she does the fixer part, mm -hmm. and then I'll do the wash part. So it's, it's, it's from the front end all the way to the back end. And that's what we like about that one. But. Yeah. A lot of it is, it just starts as an idea. It's hardly ever going out and finding things. It's having us in, 
and we don't really shoot because of the object. I'm shooting the tonalities and the light coming from the object. I don't go out to go take a picture of a set of gears. I go out to get some shadows with details and some textures. And I really don't care what the subject of the picture is. The subject of the picture to me is tonality. And um, a lot of that starts with just daydreaming. Um, I draw sketches, I write poems. A lot of my pictures are because of a poem that I wrote and I go out and try to shoot that poem. So I'll just, one day I'll pick up a notebook and I'm like, oh, there's that idea. And then I'll go do that one today. And then you go out and find that. And it's hardly ever we come up on something. Oh, let's shoot that. Let's shoot that. <laughs> it's, it's in our head first. And then if we end up finding it, that's cool too. Yeah. But um, not very often do we do that. No. no. And a lot of what, the way I approach mine a lot of the time is, um, well, I like to collect cool stuff. So I go to flea markets, garage sales and all that. And um, then I'll come across it and it'll just be sitting around the house or around the studio here. And <laughs> one day I'll think, oh, you know, that would add to a nice scene or into that set or whatever. And uh, one of the images that's at the Hearst is the tea time. And uh, so it has a teapot and a book, an old book and some old glasses I've picked up along the years. And um, that morning I was gonna go shoot it and the light through the window at the house was coming through. So there was a cool shadow through the lace curtains. And I had to take down the curtains and bring them to the studio. And it ended up being the finishing piece of the, of the set there. And a lot of mine at the, at the Hearst who are, are abstracts and just dark room wizardry. Mm -hmm. It's all done in the, either uh, in camera or uh, in the enlarger in there where I'll turn the paper and I'll sandwich negatives together. All those are just kind of just like feelings or just thoughts of, you know, and it's usually a very confused thought if you, if you, if you were to look at my abstract stuff, a lot of it very confusing. I was probably pretty confused that day. So I, that's kind of how I shoot is more about what I'm thinking about and feeling and not there's not so much the object or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. And you know the other thing that I like about um, it, we take a lot of time in our work. It, it takes a lot many hours days to complete one piece. And um, what I hope that comes through with the work or longer, yeah. <laughs> I hope that comes through with the work and it kind of encourages people to, you know, take their time on various projects that they're working on. You know, you don't always need the computer to complete something. These old school photographers certainly have an appreciation for photographs on paper. And unfortunately, they think that's a sentiment that's starting to lose traction. The other thing that I kind of have with digital photography now, um, not many pictures, not many images become photographs to me because they're not on paper. They, they aren't printed out and yeah. to me that is more of the definition of a photograph is when it comes out on paper. Before that it's an image, it's just a bunch of pic pixels and binary code. So, you know, even like Kind of the lesson I'm hoping that people kind of come away with is that, you know, from your digital camera, from your phone, whatever you're taking your family snapshots on, print those things out, get them on paper, because who knows what's going to happen in the future. We're losing that as a society, yeah. of, uh, an image being an actual tangible thing. Right. They just exist on the card and, or exist on, on the computer. Well, if it just stays there, is it really, does it? Is it really a thing then? When you can fit thousands of these on a little card? Is it really a, a thing? Does it exist like a sculpture would exist? Or like, and there's so something to the, the communal aspect of a photograph too, of a printed out photograph where, you know, um, like when I was a kid and my family still does it, we sit around the table and we pass around family pictures from the old days. 
where now what do you, you're going to pass around your iPad and the yeah. screen's going to go dark and so you run into issues. Yeah, with that yeah, all you're the time. flipping, you're flipping through it as a, as opposed to just dumping the box of grandma's pictures out. Yeah. And um, so we're missing that as a society, or we're losing, I, we're losing that. Well, I always think that it's important as, as an artist and as someone who supports the arts that people support artists, especially local ones. And the Hearst Center is doing a fantastic job of keeping the arts alive here in Cedar Falls. Um, and, you know, kind of, I think it's a chance to, you know, it's the middle of winter. There's a lot going on, but there's nothing going on, too and step away from the screens, get unplugged for a minute and go see art in person. You know, why not? It's there for us. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a time to sit and relax and just enjoy art. I don't have time to show you today, but I talked with Shannon and Colleen for more than an hour about analog photography and the way photographs used to be created. In fact, uh, I think when I get a chance, I'll probably order prints of some of my favorite pictures. Uh, there's just something to be said for holding a photograph in your hands. Studies in the reactions of silver and light is showing now at the Hearst Center and is free to attend until March 27th. Hearst Center hours can be found at www.hearstartscenter.com. If you'd like to hear more about how Shannon and Colleen create their work, they'll be giving a public lecture at the Hearst Center on Sunday, February 7th at 1.30 p.m. That'll do it for this episode of the Arts Overlook. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Colby Campbell, and we'll see you next time.